we have got rid of February, so that's great. So we are one month closer to all of these things happening. Yay! And that is kind of what today's um, today's talk is all about. So let us begin. And I will turn off commenting. It's lovely to see you all. I'll turn them back on again later. Um, and I will put up the first image, which is this one. Okay, so what does this have to do with now? This is a fresco from Pompeii. So this is over 2000 years old. Um, and, and I love it because I have to tell you that I read so can you see, so there's a little, there's a little bird on the, the left hand side, which is like, I don't know, is it a heron or a stork or something? I don't know, it's got very long legs by the looks of it. Um, but then in the centre there, um, as you move over to the left, just in the centre, there's, it's actually another bird on, um, on, a, on a tree or a bush or something, but <laughs> I've got to say that I always read it as a fish. So I'm always kind of thinking that this is an underwater statue, which it isn't, it completely isn't. Um, um, yeah, so that's a, a little bird. It's just, sorry, I'm just sharing the way that I see this um, with you. But the statue is of the Greek god Ares. What was Ares called in Roman times? Or in, in Roman, um, what was his Roman name? He was called... Mars. What does Mars have to do with now? Mars. March. Yes, we actually get the term for the month of March from the Roman god Mars. Mars was the god of war. What on earth was the connect connection there? Well, the connection was, was that, um, March or this time of year was the time that um, that people could go back into battle so that the Romans could actually go back into battle. So that's when all the soldiers would gather and when they would march. So they would march back off to whichever war they were indulging in at the time and you know, or whichever land they decided to conquer at the time or whatever, whatever they were up to. Always very busy. Um, so that's where we get the, the term Mars from or the, uh, the month Mars. The name for the month of Mars, March. Uh, fact of the day. Fact of the day. I am gonna say that I'm slightly worried for this fellow though going going into battle. I mean, all he's got is a very fancy hat on with some lovely plumes there. Um, a slightly sort of wistful expression. He's got a lovely cloak or cape, um, and you know he's got his. Um, do they call them spear and his uh shield but he hasn't got any clothes on he you know it's only march it's not the middle of summer it's going to be quite chilly and i think he needs a bit more protection i am quite worried for him um there's a reason that he's naked too not naked nude too um so this is a roman fresco as i said it's from pompeii um and it is emulating um greek statues so greeks created their statues in bronze um ancient greece became came before ancient rome the ancient romans absolutely thought the ancient greeks were marvelous and so they copied everything they did so they copied their statues um but because the greeks used bronze the romans copied them in marble and then just thought wow We've got our own now, so we don't need to we don't need to keep these. And oh, that bronze could come in handy for other things like making weapons for all the conquering and fighting that we need to do. Um, so they did melt down a whole load of the uh, of of the the, the Greek um, the Greek statues that uh, that inspired them. But the point is, is that the nude in Greek. So the reason that quite often um, the the Romans depicted uh gods such as um as mars um in the nude when obviously they wouldn't have been going off to battle in the nude was because they were copying the greeks and in the greek culture the nude was a symbol of um 
sort of nobility. It's like if, if you were nude, you were the hero, you were kind of transcending um, anything worldly. You didn't need clothes. You, you had nothing, I suppose, to, um, to sort of, to pin you in your, in your time or in your class or in anything. You were sort of above all that. You transcended all of that. So, so the nude was very much a symbol of the hero in the Greek culture and that translated then into the Roman culture. Um, and so that is why he's got no clothes on. There you go. So he has got no clothes on. He is looking a little bit um, wan just before he goes <laughs> into battle, a little bit wistful. Not quite as wistful, I'm going to say, as this gorgeous fellow. Um, this is a painting by Velazquez, the great Spanish master Velazquez. It's now in the Prado, if I remember correctly. Um, and it was created in about 1638. So we're jumping forward considerably in time. Um, this is still Mars, so even though we're jumping forward in time, you can see that he's kind of, he's still depicted in some ways um, in the same way, but this is quite a different, um, a different feel, isn't it, this, this portrait? So I'm gonna, it's not a portrait, it's a depiction. Um, so, you know, I'm gonna say that he really, really doesn't want to go to war, this guy. <laughs> He really doesn't want to go to war. And why doesn't he want to go off to war? Why doesn't he want to march? Um, well, I mean, look at him. He's not sitting on a soldier's bed, is he? He's got this beautiful sort of sumptuous sheets behind him, um, covering him, covering his modesty in quite a, a, a sensual way. So I'm going to suggest that maybe he isn't in a soldier's bed, but he has just been up to, I was going to say up to no good, but he might have been up to very good um, with whoever I think he's just been with, because I don't think he's just spent uh, any time alone by the looks of him. So uh, so once again, he's, um, he's it's an interesting way of dressing, isn't it? Once again, he's put his helmet on first. Um, how do we know he is Mars and not just somebody else? Um, well, again, because the he's got his his shield and there are sort of some other um, accoutrement of um, of war at his at his at his feet there. Um, so this is um, this is a, a type of image that was um, sort of almost part of a of a convention so we had Mars the the nude hero this is something just a little bit different because here we've got Mars the um uh, the the god of war um who is almost nude um but his in, in, instruments of war are on the the floor so this is sort of suggesting that he has just been making love in this bed behind him um, and so therefore it's sort of become part of a convention of love essentially triumphing over war so if you see Mars and you know it's Mars because he's got his helmet on and so on um, yeah and, and all of his shield and everything on the floor that's probably a sign of him being defeated by love which then sort of translates and becomes something bigger um so thinking about sort of love conquers all that kind of that kind of idea um so love is conquering all here yay go mars um, or don't go mars um go venus i guess who was his lover uh and uh, so it's got a slightly different feel to it, a slightly different feel. It's not surprising that this one's got a slightly different feel. Um, it was created for Philip IV for his hunting lodge just outside of Madrid. Um, so I guess a hunting lodge is going to have a sort of connotation with more pleasurable leisure activities rather than um, rather than marching off to war and being all all military. So um, so I guess the kind of the the, the love theme um, fits in quite nicely there as well. Uh, uh, but I also just want to point out, so, I mean, he is marvellous. So he has got this rather marvellous um, handlebar moustache, hasn't he? Um, so he is... Um, 
he is very, very pensive. I think he really, really doesn't want to go off to war. He has got this rather marvellous marvelous handlebar moustache. But he also, and this is, um, this is just, well, I'm going to point out what I'm, <laughs> what I'm thinking here first. Can you see his, it would be his left leg. So the leg that is nearest to the, the, the right hand side of the painting. So just beneath the, the, the blue um, covering, like the sheets that are covering his modesty. Um, you can see this line of paint around the top of his thigh. And I was looking at that and I was thinking, my God, it looks like he's wearing a pair of holdups. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I don't know whether you know what I mean, because I can't see your faces. But um, So there's this sort of, there's a, yeah, a, a line of paint around the top of his thigh. Now, I am going to assume that Velazquez wasn't trying to uh, to suggest to us that Mars liked to wear stockings or hold-ups, uh, not the least because they hadn't been invented then, um, not in the way that we would see them here, um, but... Uh, but I think it's um, it's an overpainting or what might have happened. So I think that probably the blue came down a little bit further originally. And then uh, Velazquez decided that, oh, maybe he wanted to, I don't know, just, uh, I don't know, make Mars a little bit more sexy. Um, uh, an interesting depiction, by the way, of older flesh. So this is very much the... Um, the man going into war rather than the soldier. Um, so it's sort of a transitional um, moment, I guess, as well, this image. Um, but, uh, but yes, I think he has over-painted the, um, the, the blue and then over time paint, paint layers can become transparent. Um, so probably that line wasn't visible when Velasquez finished this painting um but um with the the paint becoming more transparent um it, it's become more visible over time so it looks like he's wearing a hold up i don't think that was any kind of intention at all but uh yes so just a summary because i think i've jumped around a little bit all over the place um this is velasquez's velasquez's um depiction of Mars in the tradition of love conquering all because all of his stuff is on the on the floor um, and it's quite clear that he has just been engaged in other activities uh, but it's also quite um, an, an interesting and unusual depiction because Velasquez is also depicting older flesh which is why possibly we've got this um, rather pensive look um you know he's not a young maybe slightly naive slightly silly soldier who doesn't understand the implications of war you know this is this is a, a man who has seen a little bit of life um and uh, and so you know perhaps that also feeds into the fact that he might not particularly want to be uh, want to be going especially not when he's got such a delicious bed behind him if any of you watched my stories um you will have seen an image by Michelangelo an image is a, a statue by Michelangelo of Lorenzo de Medici um not Lorenzo the Magnificent very much not Lorenzo the Magnificent uh the statue is this uh, this is the one that I put up. Um, so this is Lorenzo de Medici. This is on his tomb. It's by Michelangelo. And, um, and so he is the grandson, I think I'm right, of, uh, of Lorenzo the Magnificent. He didn't do that many magnificent things in his lifetime. Um, uh, he just happened to be the right age, in the right place, at the right time to have Michelangelo create a sculpture for his uh, for his tomb. Um, so, but you can see very clearly here that um, the Velazquez has taken inspiration from from Michelangelo's uh, Lorenzo de Medici. The, uh, it, the this is uh, is nicknamed the Thinker, and so there we've got. Uh, Oh, Velasquez, he's having a jolly good old think too. So that is the origin of the month of March. I keep wanting to call it Mars. This is the god of Mars, the origin of the month of March, because 
um, March, you know, springtime was the the moment at which armies were able to literally march again. So it does what it says on the tin. Um, the Romans had other, some other um, goddesses, actually, all of them, I think, um, for, for other months. So they had... Um, so May was Maya, so that's the sort of a spring goddess. June was Juno, um, who is um the uh like Jupiter or um Zeus's wife, so kind of queen of the gods, so sort of a good a good good month for women that one. Um but May June so then July and August um were originally the fifth month and the sixth month so they would have been in the the roman calendar um what, what's five um pent pentember um and then six would have been i don't know six six is it sex sextember sexember sexember i love that so six says so sexember um but then um then julius and augustus the emperors got on in on the act so they were like no we want to name them after us so then um pentember became i don't know what that's not what it was i don't know what anyway it was the fifth month uh so that became july and then um august um obviously from augustus um and then, so then September was the seventh month, September, October, November, December. So seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth month, which then now, if you think about it, it makes absolutely no sense at all because September is the ninth month in our calendar. That is explained because in the Roman calendar, originally they only had 10 months and um, like January and February didn't exist. They were just like the the shit time that everyone wanted to forget um you know because it was cold and dark or maybe they didn't maybe that was the, like the really delicious time for them when they had their men at home not marching off to war or uh, whatever uh and um and it was only later that uh that january and february were added and january i think january was a, a um named after janus another god or goddess can't really remember and february yeah again i don't know oh i missed out april april's about budding um and 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 spring so they all kind of had meanings apart from them when they ran out of meanings and then they numbered them um and then they realized that they really ought to add <laughs> that they had quite an expansive time with uh with no name and so they split that up and made january and february all clear clear as mud that no, hopefully not clear as mud hopefully uh hopefully a bit clearer than that but thank you march so there we go that is all about march hi emma we've got two emmas hello um yes so i hope you got that um I don't know, I jumped around a little bit, I think, with the, uh, with the Velasquez, too much to say about one, about one lovely image. But that's kind of the best thing, isn't it? Like, isn't it great when you get a painting that is in one way so simple, um, but in other ways not complicated? That might not be complicated, but, um, but nuanced. Nuanced is a great word. Thank you, highly entertaining. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so, but if your head has just exploded, if I have just kind of jumped around, Tom Selleck! Oh my God, we've got to have, oh my God, he was, he's Tom Selleck, we, oh, Tom Selleck! <laughs> Brilliant. It's controversial pieces and tones for this time period. Uh, what do you mean by that? March some controversial pieces and tones for this time period. I don't know what you mean. Um, but I'd love to know what you mean, Aaron. Um, so, yeah. Oh, my God. Tom Selleck. I'm laughing. <laughs> Tom Selleck. Um, uh, yes. Um, yeah, but if you... If that kind of... I don't know. 
not blew your mind, I think that would be the wrong expression, but if that got uh, confusing, which I hope it didn't, um, I have written a blog now, which I'll put up. So I've got the Elevens' blog, which is now on my website. So you can, um, obviously you can watch this video back or you can, um, you can go to my website, which has got something called the Elevens' blog. And I just kind of pracy what I've talked about and um and with images so you can have a look at the images and um and it's all good and something for everybody I hope very much anyway <laughs> I feel like I've gone off on a bit of a rant today what's going on maybe it's because it's March and I've got my nice March yellow jumper on I don't know what's going on never mind I'm gonna wish you a great weekend and a lovely well rest of the week and a great weekend um i will be back next week oh, it's international women's day isn't it next monday so i've got not one but two this month um talks about women artists um maybe you've heard of them maybe you haven't heard of them I don't know um if you haven't heard of them um you definitely would if you watch if you watch me um by the end of the month and it's they are definitely worth knowing about I'm gonna say that definitely worth knowing about uh so that is coming up coming up in March coming up in March I'm gonna go <laughs> have a great Thursday everybody <laughs> lovely to see you all and uh thank you very much for joining me Bye. Oh, Daisy. Sorry, we've just finished. Watch it on Catch Up. It'll be up later on today. Speak to you soon. Bye. Bye.